Hello, and welcome to the last video in the Wisest STEM Mentoring Series, Learning from the Women That Inspire Us. We want to thank you for joining us over the past five segments. We hope you found them informative. When you're done watching this video, we would appreciate if you headed over to our post-event survey. The link is in the description. Let us know what you liked or didn't like, or what you wanted to see more of. This helps us improve our programs for future audiences. If you fill it out before June 7th, you will be automatically entered in to win a $50 Amazon gift card. Without further ado, let's go ahead and answer some of the questions you submitted over the past two weeks. The question is, were there any moments when you questioned your belonging in your field? My answer would be absolutely. I have experienced self-doubt throughout my career. I would say more so at the beginning. Over time, as you gain more experiences, you become more comfortable in what you do and develop greater confidence. It is important to recognize that these internal anxiety or negative feelings may never fully go away, and that is okay. What is more important is for you to take the time to reflect on your own strengths and weaknesses and find out what you bring to the work you do. Remember, no one is good at everything on day one and continuous improvement is key. Set realistic expectations and goals and don't be too hard on yourself. Build a supportive network around you. Include positive individuals such as mentors and friends that can be your sounding board and to provide you with constructive feedback when necessary. I hope you find these tips helpful. All the best. Um, certainly there have been um, throughout my career. So I'm an engineer and I've been in um, engineering undergrad and graduate classes for a number of years. So um, they're still very much male dominated. And um, especially when I was in undergrad, I was really unsure if I belonged in engineering. Um, and I didn't have a lot of confidence. So I was definitely questioning my abilities. And even um, every once in a while in grad school or when I'm working, I'll question, you know, do I really belong here? Do I really know enough? Can I really do this? Um, and certainly that's totally normal to question yourself from time to time. It's called imposter syndrome. Um, it's not, um, it's really common and just know that Maybe you might question yourself for a day or two or just a couple minutes, but um, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. Of course you can do it. If you have the drive, um, there's no there's no limit to what you can do. So even if you're just a little unsure, not quite confident yet, don't let that hold you back. Um, it's normal to doubt yourself from time to time, and of course you can do it. Um, and if you're doubting yourself for a little bit, you know, ask your friends or your family and they're gonna tell you how amazing you are and uh, that you can move mountains. So don't, if you're questioning your belonging in engineering, science, anything like that, that's totally normal. That's a normal response. Don't worry about it and just know that you can do whatever you set your mind to. How can one be more engaged in the field of STEM through Wisest as a prospective university student starting university in the fall of 2020? volunteer with us. We are a volunteer driven organization. We require volunteers for many of our programs, um, including the SET conference for high school girls in the fall and the Choices conference for grade six girls that happens in February. We also have a number of volunteer opportunities through our Girls Who Code partnerships, and we're hoping to develop even more of these community partnerships, which will require volunteers. Um, in order to stay informed of the ways that you can be engaged with us, I highly recommend that you follow us on both social media and sign up for our newsletter because that's where all of these opportunities appear. Uh, you can find our newsletter link on our homepage or you can send us an email at wisest.ualberta.ca. We hope to see you volunteer with us. Okay, so this is for the question for grade 12 students entering university and then dealing with large class sizes. So. Um, it's very common to be in a large class size in university for ranging from 100 people to 400 people. And just the best thing to do is just to be open minded and realize that everyone is new to uh, everything, especially if everyone is, you know, like a first year um, student in a first year like subject, like, you know, like a 100 class. And it's common to feel nervous, but honestly, everyone is feeling that way. So you're not the only one and just being open-minded and 
taking the leap of faith to talk to someone. Honestly, when you go to a class, like let's say you don't know anyone, um, you're going to be nervous and you're not going you're not going to know where to sit. And that's why it's good to like if you see someone sitting by themselves, you could just ask like, "Oh, are you are you waiting for anyone or um uh is anyone sitting with you?" And if they say no, um they will probably, you know, maybe want to offer the seat to you or so forth and you can suggest that oh can i sit with you and then you can like become friends you can like introduce each other um i personally actually did that for my very first class i didn't know anyone in my math class and i saw some girl just sitting on the side and i was like you know what i'll i'll try that out so i asked her like oh um is anyone sitting with you and she's like no and i was like okay can i sit with you she's like sure and then we ended, ended up being like really good friends she was my very first university friend i didn't even know her she was from a different part of town uh, from edmonton i'm from edmonton and um after that she actually connected to me she connected me to like another group of friends and i became friends with them and we all studied together during finals during assignments it was just a good way to meet people but um when you have a large class size reach out just talk to someone and it's just also good to have a buddy in that class. Another thing that can make large classes intimidating is just that you have less face time with the professor. Um, but most professors have office hours, which is a designated time that you can go to their office and ask them questions about the course. Take advantage of that. I was so intimidated by office hours in my first year, um, but that was that was so silly because the office hours are literally there for you to come and ask questions. So if there's something you can't figure out, Go to the office hours, take your friends if you, you know, need the confidence boost, but go and ask questions if you have them. That is what that time is there for, and most professors are more than happy to answer your questions and good to talk to. Um, so that's really important. And then the last thing I would quickly say is I would encourage you to join smaller communities on campus. There are tons of clubs or intramurals that you can join. Um, and those are just good ways to get to know a group of people outside of your program as well. Clubs, you can attend them year after year and those friends you make there, you can keep seeing them continuously throughout your degree. Some of the best friends I made at my at, throughout university were at a club that I joined in my first year and continued going to throughout all of my five years. So that's a great way to meet people as well and to make the university feel a little bit more like home. How can individuals living in isolated or rural communities still engage in STEM despite not having big city communities and opportunities? This question resonated with me as I actually grew up in a rural community outside of Edmonton and attended a relatively small high school. However, the great thing about STEM is that science, technology, engineering, and math are present everywhere around us, and there are actually not many limitations by not being located in a major urban center. Today, I'll share a few ideas with you about how you can connect with STEM in your community. Number one, connect virtually with STEM. There are great online resources through organizations that can enable you to bring STEM into your life virtually, online, and at home. Some programs to check out online include CyberMentor. CyberMentor is based out of Calgary and is an online mentoring platform where via email participants are paired with a STEM professional and connect over the course of a year. Other resources are available online at APEGA, the Professional Engineering Association of Alberta, ACTUA, a STEM outreach organization that's present across Canada, Lex, Let's Talk Science, or the Girl Guides of Canada. All of these have some really great resources to help, to help you learn about STEM. Number two for ideas, connect locally with STEM professionals. Reach out to friends, family, neighbors, or teachers to see if they have local connections to STEM in your community where you live. The goal with this being connecting with an individual to learn more in person about a job shadow or just a chat. This could be things like engineers who work at your city or town office, forestry mill, environmental professionals, or veterinarians in your local community. If you are connected to someone who doesn't live near you, have a Zoom or a phone call with them to learn more. Don't be afraid to ask lots of questions. The third idea for connecting with STEM, attend programs in larger cities. 
Groups like Wisest offer weekend and summer programs where students can visit a university campus in person and learn more about STEM careers. Apply for the Wisest Summer Research Program, which generally has a residence option for out-of-town students, or make a weekend visit to attend the Wisest SET Conference held in November. STEM is such an exciting career field and full of limitless possibilities. I wish you all the best in your future paths. Good luck and take care. What has inspired you to seek a position where women are underrepresented? I think for me, what got me into science and what continues to push me in science is just that I am pursuing and learning about what I'm interested in and what I'm passionate about. And I actually started at university in my first year planning on going into business and I was taking all my business prereqs and I had time to take a couple of options. So I just picked some introductory science options, chemistry and biology. And it didn't take me very long to realize that those were the courses I was most interested in and that if I went into business, even though um, that's still a great degree, I would miss getting to do the science because that's what I loved learning and loved doing. And so when I made the switch into science, I, I honestly didn't even consider at first that that was maybe a less common field for women to go into. It wasn't until I got there that I realized I was surrounded by more of more male peers than female peers. But if anything, that, that pushed me to want to be more excellent, I think, that if they can do it, of course I can do it. And I'm going to do it just as good, if not better, because I'm very competitive. <laughs> and... Um, and along the way, I've met some incredible individuals who, who have inspired and supported and encouraged me. I've met some amazing women in chemistry and science who do just that, and I hope to do that for others as well. And so I would, I would say that it doesn't matter who, who is in the room or who's not in the room. If you're interested in doing something and pursuing a, a vocation or an education uh, in a given field, go and do it, and you will find your place there, and you will find individuals who can support you, and then you can turn around and do the exact same thing for others. And of course, that's the that's the the I think that's the best way to um, kind of shake up the status quo and 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 advocate for people to go into fields where where they might otherwise be intimidated to do so because they don't know if they're represented there or not. Um, and it's been a it's been a privilege to get to pursue and study what I love, and that's that's what got me into it, and that's what continues to propel me. So I have to say, in thinking about this question, I didn't necessarily pursue a position where women are underrepresented. I pursued an industry where women are underrepresented and the career followed. And I think part of my success has been that I didn't let that stop me. Uh, and I forged ahead and used the skills that I honed uh, as a female leader to help drive really good outcomes. So in my role today, I'm the Senior Program Manager supporting TELUS's 5G network overall, our network built nationally across TELUS. Uh, and in this role, I have to work with a lot of technical people and I'm very often the only woman at the table. And I'm the woman at the table who has the master plan and is helping to guide and move, move work forward. So, I see a really strong need for women to be at the table, to be helping promote balanced conversations, and to be helping bring in additional diversity of thought into our technical teams uh, so that we can drive forward really innovative solutions. I'm happy to be leading the charge in this in my particular realm. And I would say if I were to give any advice to uh, young people interested in pursuing careers in technology, definitely go for it. Don't let the lack of gender diversity stop you. I would say it's an advantage because what you can bring to the role is going to be new, it's going to be innovative, and it's certainly going to be needed. Good luck, everybody, and have a great series. First and foremost, I pursued a degree in engineering because I was interested in the field. That said, I also pursued a degree in engineering because I was supported and empowered by my family and teachers. Women are often underrepresented in fields, not for their lack of interest, but for the lack of support systems and exposure to these fields. I was inspired to pursue an engineering degree because all of the women in my family are university educated, and I was raised in an environment where my interest in STEM was nurtured and supported. Now, as a woman in the field of engineering, I'm co-chair for UAYS, where we provide support and professional development opportunities for undergraduate students from minority groups pursuing degrees in STEM. I encourage all young women to find a support system, whether it's made of friends, family, teachers, or an organization like UAYS that can help inspire them to pursue the many exciting opportunities available in STEM. 
what types of research slash volunteer programs can a high school student get involved with? So if you're from the Edmonton area, there are research opportunities at the U of A, such as HIP, which is a computing science program. Uh, there's Eureka, there's Hires, which is sort of a medical science internship in grade 11. Um, and then for any students who are in grade 11 who are female or a gender minority, there is also the WISE Summer Research Program, um, which you can apply to coming out of your grade 11 year. There are also programs like the Science Olympics. Um, really, most of these programs will advertise in schools, uh, so keep your eyes peeled for posters, keep an eye on the school website, listen to the school announcements, and you'll probably hear about these opportunities. In terms of volunteering, there is the TELUS World of Science, or there's other science centers out there if you're not from Edmonton, um, and they often will have high school volunteer programs. Similarly, uh, camps like Discover E or the science camps at the U of A will sometimes have high school volunteer positions as well. Just send them an email um, and inquire, and the, the worst they can say is no. Additionally, WISEST also puts on a set conference for high school girls and gender minorities in the fall, and a component of that conference is networking and connecting with role models. And definitely don't underestimate the power of networking and making connections, because you never know when a connection may turn into an opportunity, just simply by asking, are you aware of any volunteer opportunities for high school students that may turn into something for you? So what kind of careers are out there for someone looking to help the environment and how can you get started in that type of career? So I'm an environmental engineer and I have a number of degrees um, in that area. And the reason that I chose environmental engineering, because there's many types of engineering, um, is specifically because I wanted to help the environment and just make the world a better place. So you can do that with environmental engineering, you can do that with environmental science, biology, chemistry, there's a number of degrees that you could choose there. And what's so great about um, these degrees is that once um, you have your degree, you can work in a number of different areas. You could do consulting, you could do um, work with the government in regulatory work, you can work for public health. So there's a number of different um, ways to get that type of career. There's no one direction. And um, how do you get started? I would start by trying to take a summer job that maybe is related to one of these careers. Um, also, when you're in the program, in one of these programs, working throughout the summers um, in those areas and really trying to get a feel for what you're looking for in your job. And then once you're finished your degree, there's so many different paths that you can take. So you can uh, move around a bit, go and consult work for the government and there's a bunch of different ways to get involved in this career there's no one way but I would say just um, trying to uh, get your degree in that area and then also just getting work experience in that area and that'll really help you figure out the best way for you to help the environment this question is when applying to faculties at the U of A regarding STEM uh, what are they really looking for in a prospective applicant and then the second part of this question is, what makes an ideal student, for instance, for the engineering faculty? Now, I'll answer like the first part of it. Uh, what are they really looking for in a prospective applicant? Now, I don't know anything behind the logistics of how they pick people um, for who's going to get, get admitted right away or who gets admitted later, etc. You know what? Um, but r really, I would say that if you're looking for a STEM field, you should take all three science core subjects in high school so that includes biology chemistry and physics and that i'm pretty sure you're going to take calculus class as well so you should take the math 31 or like the calculus class that's in high school that's offered and also the dash ones for the maths as well now um that would be my best um like advice to high school students who want to be good applicants is to uh, have all three core subjects of the sciences and then calculus math as well because you're going to take it eventually even if you don't do it in high school you're going to learn it still in university and it's a, a good choice for you to get that better edge and know what's coming so yeah <laughs> and um for what makes an ideal student for the faculty of engineering uh, same thing as what I said for the STEM students who need to do all three sciences and then calculus math and then math 30-1. But also, um, honestly, having a lot of extracurriculars is good. Um, not to say that like you shouldn't overwhelm yourself, but I think a lot of people, when they go into engineering, they just think that it's just all grades, study, study, study. 
I think the best engineers that will come out of it will be the ones who can juggle everything and balance like maybe working but also you know hang out with friends um also maybe volunteering their time somewhere um but volunteer work is super i think good for an ideal student who wants to go into in, to the engineering faculty um and i think that you know well-rounded people will always be the best type of applicants and I personally also didn't have like the best grades, but I also made sure that I was well-rounded. I worked two jobs actually before I entered university. I also, you know, hang out with people, uh, just like typical, like, you know, life things that you do when you have free time. Um, but it is important to be just well-rounded. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this series and want to learn more about us or want to access other resources we've developed, subscribe to our newsletter. The link is in the description below. You'll get access to all the latest information about relevant scholarships, conferences, WISIS programs, and fun activities. Last but not least, if you have some time, please head over to our post-event survey. It will only take a few minutes, and if you fill it out before June 7th, 2020, you will automatically be entered in to win a $50 Amazon gift card. That's it for now. Bye-bye.